Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Have you seen any problem like that? Right. And that's exactly what happens when there is no entity relationships, right? I'm going to show you guys exactly what is the importance of creating entity relationships and what happens if there is no relationship between entities, right? And also, we're going to talk about different, different aspects of uh, the relationships itself, unidirectional, bidirectional, and all those different things, whatever is you have to know while you create your relationship in your Power BI, right? Let's get started right now. So what I have here is your uh, fact table. So I have my transactional table here. So all this transaction will fall into this table. So this is the table in my model that's gonna constantly get down beefed up, right? So whenever there is a transaction, this table will increase. Uh, so if you see here, uh, let me show you guys here. I choose my fact sales yes so if you see here it has gonna have all the foreign keys from my other uh, lookup tables all these foreign keys and then it's gonna have these amounts here, like the sales amount tax amount free charges and total product cost and all these things right so let's go back to our uh, uh, visualization place here so what I'm gonna what I can do here is basically I can um, I can take my sales amount, right? I can get the sum of my sales amount here. I'm just gonna choose the card. So uh, the total sales amount in my, uh, for the total organization that I have is 29.36 million, right? So that's a total sales amount. So let's say I wanted to uh, look into the sales amount by product, right? So how many products do I have? Let's say I have like 100 products. What is the sales for each and every 100 product? I know the total is 29.36 million, but what is the sales for the all the 29, uh, all the 100 different products that I have, right? So how do I do that? Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna add in a product table into my modeling. So I'm gonna go to my transform. I'm gonna take my product table, enable load, and let, let's go to the modeling place. Know. it goes to the product place you see here the relationship already occurs so uh, since uh, so for this setting what's happening is basically in my um, in my options and settings in my options I have a setting enabled I go to the data load the current file you see here the import relationships so our auto de auto detect uh, new relationships after data is loaded I just need to uncheck this so if you just uncheck this uh, you might keep it open it depend, you might keep it as on uh, it's not going to cause any trouble but uh, if you uncheck this what's going to happen is when I bring in the new data into my model uh, it's not going to build the relationship automatically so just for the illustration purpose I'm just going to keep it as unchecked uh, so I'm just and then I'm going to delete this I'm going to show you guys first things first what's going to happen What's going to happen if we don't have any relationship right now? We don't have any relationships. Let's go back here. Uh, I have two tables here, my uh, transaction table, sales table, and then I have my product table, right? So this is my dimension table or a lookup table or however we wanted to call it. Um, so let's say I wanted to get the uh, product. So let's take the product here, the model name. So I wanted to understand uh, how much sales I have for each and every model, right? So let's see. All righty. So, so we have a table here. So you see, you have uh, different models, uh, all purpose, bike wash, cable lock, chain, classic vest, and all these different models. Uh, so these are different products that I have. However, if you see the sales amount, it doesn't uh, show a split up of the different products. It just shows that some of the uh, total sales that I have in the in the company, it just shows all across different products, right? So it is not showing me a split up. And that's exactly the problem that happens if you don't have any relationship, right? So uh, now let's go ahead and build the relationship and see what's gonna happen. 
so for building the relationship you can do it in uh, quite a number of ways you can just either you know drag and drop the product key so this is the foreign key in your transaction table you can just drag and drop it into your dimension table or let's uh, go to the easier way uh, you can also do like a auto detect uh, it says found on relationship right so you see here it's automatically established in the relationship right so I'm also gonna show you guys uh, uh, another way to do that so uh, let's go here so again let's go to manage relationships right um, I'm gonna go to the new relationship and I'm gonna choose my uh, fact internet sales and dim product right then what's gonna happen here is basically I can choose the uh, columns that I wanted to uh, take part in the relationship so product key from my dim product is going to be related to the product key in my uh, fact sales right so and then we have your different cardinalities here many to one one to one one to one one to many many to many so this case uh, so fact sales gonna have it's a foreign key so for one product I'm gonna have multiple transactions within my fact sales right so this is gonna be uh, unique unique values I'm gonna have in the product table I'm only gonna have like you know what like let's say 100 products uh, for these 100 products I'm gonna have like millions and millions of transactions by different customers on a given day so that's why in the transaction table I'll have multiple uh, product keys but in the dimension table I'm gonna only have like unique values of this product key right so that's why it's many many product keys in the transaction table to one product key in the dim product table so that's why it's called many to one right so um, uh, next thing we'll go to the cross filter so in this uh, form what we also have is uh, we can uh, enable the cross filtering it can be either single or both so right now I'm just gonna say it as single and we'll come back to the both in a few minutes right so what happens if we do single so I'm just gonna once the relationship is established I'm just gonna close it all right so now we have the relationship established as we already discussed it's one to many so one from my uh, uh, print dim product table is going to have many records in my uh, uh, transaction table right so and then it's a single direction so it's uh, the data is going to flow from you can always analyze from my um, product table into the transaction table only one way right so let's see uh, now if you see here if you go back here as the relationship is established now it clearly shows a breakdown of the different costs right so that's what's gonna happen uh, if you have the relationship now uh, let's see how this relationship works so what's gonna happen here is basically so I chose a model on the visualization which is uh, yeah which is here the model name and I also chose a sales right the sales amount so what's gonna happen is the visualization is basically uh, this visualization especially it's gonna look for, look for the all the model names that I have in the dim product and it's gonna choose their corresponding sales uh, sales amount that happens and it's gonna sum up all the sales corresponding to a given model and a given line line item and it's gonna you know sum up all the sales from this internet sales table and then uh, it's gonna populate it here that's exactly what's happening um, uh, now let's talk about bi-directional relationships right so for that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, import another table from my transform data let's see you know what let's take the customer table let's load the customer table enable load then I'm gonna close it and let's go back here all right all right so here comes our customer table uh, so I have my fact I have my product now I have my customer right so similarly let's say establish a relationship uh, between our fact into our customer so here what I can do is I'm just gonna do a quicker way so customer key to customer key right so customer key in my fact sales will have a relationship to the customer key in the dimension right so and then it's all uh, it's uh, def by default it's setting as a unidirectional right you see here so the data is going to flow from the customer it's a uh, sorry from your fact sales all the some it's going to uh, uh, aggregate all the measures whatever we have in the fact sales and it's going to display based on whatever dimension we have here 
right similarly for this so the direction is always unidirectional for into your fact sales so let's say I have, I have a circumstance right so in which let's quickly go ahead and create a count of the products let's create a quick measure so let's go to the product table so I want to get the you know let's make the count of the customers um, count of customers right so let's just say count and customers customer let's count based on the customer first name right just have it here now if you wanted to visualize this one right let's actually do that so all right here if you see here the problem is very similar to what it was when there is no relationship right so uh, what's happening here is let me explain here so you have your sales someone broken down by your models product models but then if you see the count of customers right so power bi is not able to know uh what exactly this customer what kind of uh, how many customers do i have for this given specific model right because uh it is trying to it has a count of these customers that's fine there is no problem with that now what i'm having here is basically i have some model names i wanted to uh, get the count of these customers based on this model names right but then it is not able to traverse through the product table so I can go until the fact table no no problem I can get the you know uh, total sales by customer that's no problem uh, I can even show you guys right here uh, I can just say customer name uh, you know what let's just say uh, first name or something should be there yeah so you have first name and then you have your sales amount from your uh, transaction table see here so this should work so because you see here this should work very similar to what we have here so the customer names and their uh, sales amount broken down right it's no problem however it is not able to get go into the product uh, table and then you know make any aggregations back and forth because this relationship is only going till the fact sales and then there is no relationship going this way there's only relationship going the other way right so that's the reason this uh, count of customers is getting blocked from going into the product sales table and that's exactly why we need your bi-directional relationship now let's uh, I'll give you I'll show you a quick tweak like when uh, so you see here in my relationship between the fact sales and the product I'm gonna make it as a bi-directional right let's make it bi-directional you see here the arrow marks is like it, it works in both the direction and then here I'll do the same thing make it bi-directional right now let's take a look into the results now I have the customers the customer uh, the count of customers can go to the fact table it can also go to the product table and slice and dice on the product and then uh, it can analyze results right now if you see here the previous uh, problem that we had now it that's gone right see now it's all the number of count of customers are all broken down by the model names right so uh, that's what we have basically when you have your uh, uh, bi-directional relationship uh, right so all that matters is it doesn't matter if it's bi-directional or single direction all that it matters is how the data flows right so in this case the customer count of customers I had the count of customers here which is a local count which is just counting within this entity only right it doesn't have to go to any other table but then as soon as you uh, uh, dragged into the a table that has your product and your uh, uh, transaction table my account of customers doesn't know how it can relate to the product table right and that's exactly we had that problem before but uh, now as soon as you establish your bi-directional relationships it's all gone it's uh, it's back to normal and it works great right so that's what you have here